One of the first decisions every researcher has to make is, what do I want my research to be about? And then we probably wonder what question or questions should I ask? This video is about those decisions. I'll discuss research topics and research questions, and my goal is to help you distinguish between good research topics and questions and bad ones. This is an idea from Booth, Column, and Williams, and it is something that I really believe in. You should start with an interest. It can be anything. It can be something you see in the news. It can be something you heard in class. It can be something that a friend told you. The point is that you need to care about it because you will spend some time working on it. However, an interest is not a topic. For example, you can say, I'm interested in social media, but that doesn't really specify aspects, issues, or even platforms within social media that you may want to look into. All of this is considered social media. Until you start specifying, you do not have a topic. You have an interest. So what does a well-defined topic look like? Let's start with an example of what not to do. Take this topic, for instance. It is very broad. This term is not defined, as media can mean television, movies, magazines, radio, social media, etc. Effects is also not defined. Are you talking about behavioral effects? Are we talking about self-esteem? A good topic includes two things. First of all, it tells you the subject matter, the thing that you are interested in. And it also provides you with a claim. The claim is what you are trying to prove by doing the research. Let's look at an example from the social sciences. This is research conducted in the discipline of communication. The title of the paper tells you the subject matter. The subject matter is social media effects on young women's body image concerns. However, that's not enough. The author also needs to give you a claim about social media, what he thinks that social media creates or causes or accomplishes or affects. And this is his claim. He claims that because social media are interactive and you can share images, there may be a relationship between exposure to social media or using social media and body image concerns. Body image concerns, that means you may develop a negative perspective or a negative perception of your own body type. Now let's look at an example from the humanities. The discipline is literature or literary studies. The subject matter is highlighted in red. The subject matter is Chinese readers' interpretations of Jane Eyre. The claim is that the literary quality of Jane Eyre explains its popularity in China, but so does the Chinese cultural context. This claim is highlighted in blue. Now let's look at an example from the natural sciences. The discipline is neurosciences. This is a paper about neuroimaging and how it can be used to study obesity or the behaviors that may lead a person to become obese. The claim the author is making is this. It's about the hypothalamus and its interaction with other centers of the brain in regulating eating behavior. The authors believe that if you want to understand the neurophysiology of eating behavior, 
then you need to understand how those centers of the brain interact with each other. So again, this would be the subject matter. And in here, you would find the claim that guides the study. Let's move on to research questions. In a journal article, sometimes the questions are stated explicitly. Other times, they're just implied in the topic. However, every research project has a question that the researcher wants to answer. Otherwise, there would be no point to it. So what does a good question look like? Again, I think we should start with an example of a poorly worded question. Here's one. Does eating fast food make you fat? If you can Google the answer to your question, then there is very, very little point in asking it. Let's look at a better version of the same question. How does place of residence, income, and cultural background relate to obesity among Hispanic Americans? As you can see, I have added several words and qualifiers to the question of obesity, such as place of residence, income, cultural background, and I added the word relate because I am looking for a relationship. I have also added a specific group of people that I'm interested in. All of these markers make for a be better, more well-defined question, and they narrow down the scope of information that you have to look for and sort through in order to write your paper. Here's another example. In this case, the question is just too broad. What kind of effects are you interested in? Whose body image? What about body image do you care about? It's assessment, how you use it to determine your self-esteem, how you compare yourself to others based on body image. There are many things that you could ask that uh, need to be specified because a good question has to help you find the information that you need in order to answer it. It narrows the scope. So here's a better version of that question. How does sharing images of ideal body types through social media contribute to body image concerns among young adult women? Again, I have added words that narrow down qualify, and describe the issues that I'm interested in. And I have therefore narrowed down the scope of the information that I need in order to answer this question. Now, coming up with good topics and questions takes time, and it takes some extra effort. But in the long run, it saves you time. When it comes to looking up information, it's better to have a narrower scope than to sift through tens of thousands of documents that may or may not even be relevant to your question. Besides, if you have a compelling topic and a question worth asking, you will also end up with a paper that is worth reading. That's something to think about.